Well, all the experts joined us, so I can call the meeting to order. Is it early yet? Oh, my watch is. My watch says 5:31. I know it's a little bit fast. But 5:28. 5:28. All right. I'll wait two minutes. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, you, you have the minutes in front of you. There has one, been one correction to the minutes, uh, the abstention by Commissioner McCollin on the one motion or one uh, item of discussion last month. Are there any other additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, could I have a motion to approve the minutes with the correction? Got a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Uh, we have one public hearing. Rezoning request for a rural district R1 to commercial, from R1 to uh, commercial at 8523 Towns in Lane. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to uh, speak to that? Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me just a minute. Let me read the evacuation procedures. In the event of an emergency evacuation, an alarm will sound. Everyone should exit the building by way of the nearest stairwell in a safe and effective manner. If the nearest stairwell is blocked by smoke, use the other stairwell. Do not use the elevator. Once you have reached the main floor, follow the exit signs to exit the building and pr quickly proceed away from the building. Please be mindful of others evacuating and of emergency vehicles. Thank you, Commissioner Kirby, for reminding me. I pulled it off, but it pulled it out, but then ignored it. Okay, the public clearing for the rezoning request is open. Uh, if you'd like to speak to the issue, uh, Step to the mic, give us your name, and uh, where you live. My name's Jim Wilsford. I live in Lenore City, Tennessee, but I own this piece of property. I've owned it, owned it for about 25 years. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar where it is. It's uh, directly across the street from the Little River Village or the KO, KOA campground in Townsend. It's right at the end of the bike trail if you're going into the National Park. Thank you. There's about a two acre prop track there. And like I said, I've owned it for about 25 years now. And I have a prospective buyer that'd like to start a wood carving business there. Okay. So Thank you. Does anyone uh, on the commission have any questions of uh, the property owner? Anyone else in the audience then that wish, wishes to speak for or against the zoning request? If not, public hearing is closed. Thank, Thank you. you. Any discussion, comments? 
a motion to uh, approve the uh, recommendation to send it on to the commission or disapprove would be in order. Commissioner motion McClellan. Approve it. Second, second that motion. Count the commission. All right, we have a motion and a second to uh, send it on to the county commission. A, a motion to approve the request for rezoning. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. It will be sent on to the county commission for their uh, action with uh, recommendation from the planning commission for approval of the rezoning request. Thank you. Plymouth, or hearings, preliminary and uh, final plats, minor subdivision, Tall Oaks, Phase 4 off of Pea Ridge Road by Arthur Gotts, 11 lots off of a proposed new county road section. Doug? It's like the final plat major subdivision. That's correct. Um, outstanding items to be completed begin on page 4. I'm just going to read them into the record and update you the status of each. <clears throat> Number one is the completion of on-site construction, including additional detail work to the ditches, uh, erosion control measures installed and in place, including seating and straw, and removal of brush piles. Uh, a few of those items are still outstanding, and um, he has burned the brush piles. Number two, electric service lines to be pulled through the conduit and electric completed to all lots, or a surety posted to the utility ensuring that electric will service each lot. Uh, the electric utility shall sign the final plat in the affirmative that all the lots are accommodated by electric service before the releasing of the final plat. Uh, they're prepared to do so at this time. They have pulled the lines through the conduit. Number three, copy of the POA maintenance agreement documentation to be supplied to staff for review prior to releasing the final plat. I just got that information today. I've gone over it with the attorney, and they're going to make some changes. Uh, number four, certification from project engineer that as build improvements have been made in accordance with the engineering plans, um, I've had a conversation with the engineer and I have not got that certification yet. Number five, erosion control measures on all disturbed areas, including seed, straw, matting, silt fencing, and hay bale check dams must be in place, inspected, and maintained until vegetation is reestablished on site. And that is just ongoing even after the project. And that's all I have for you. I can address any questions you may have. Do you have any questions or uh, comments? This is the plat that we uh, approved an extension of the preliminary last month. Correct. So they have moved quickly. <laughs> yes, sir. <coughs> Commissioner Kirby? It, the, the question. Step off of uh, okay. Elder Joy. Up that way. Okay. Uh, if we approve it, you're going. He, they can, you all will have the final say-so when you get through all. Yes, we'll so make sure we forth, check off every one of these items before we sign the final plat. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept it with all the recommendations of staff. Okay. Second. Anybody second? Commissioner McClellan? I'd like to suggest that you have the surveyor add on the common driveway easement that is for utilities also. We can do that. Uh, you want to add that comment, is that Marlene? Okay, Commissioner Kirby, to yes, add? Yes, I got one more question. Uh, is that these all paved streets? Uh, to the cul-de-sac is a paved street. The common driveway is is only partially paved. If I can answer Brad Harrison's question, he asked where it was located. It's off of Pea Ridge Road. Um, what intersection is it near, Ronnie? Uh, In the area. Right. Yes. The common driveways, are we talking about the individual lots? Or that's what we're talking about on common driveways. Not two or three lots off one driveway. There's, there's actually five lots served by this common driveway. Four of them are exclusively, only have easement. One of them actually owns the stretch of Okay. Ground. What I'm getting at, we just approved the two inches in commission the other night. Is this still on the four inch? Yes. Rock. So which one? What, what is it? Which one we're going to go with? Yeah, it's four, and they've been paved on part of it, which is appropriate. They did it the right way. Okay, so that's the way it was originally set up. So you're going with that, but not the new one. Right. If he'd have okay. been building it after you changed your policy, we would have had him build it that way. Okay, thank you. Thank you're you, welcome. Mr. Chairman. 
Okay. Uh, Commissioner Harrison, did you accept Commissioner McClellan's recommendation? Okay, we have a motion to approve subject to completion of the five outstanding items with the addition of uh, a comment on the plat by the uh, surveyor of the, uh, what was that, for the utility easement, Bruce? You got that, Doug? All, right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Miscellaneous items request to close right of way in Wood Thrush subdivision deferred from last meeting. Uh, John? Yes, I, I did find that uh, memo from, <clears throat> from Norman Newton that we were trying to find for the last meeting but uh, uh, didn't find it in time. Uh, that adds some, uh, uh, some information to the consideration of this. Uh, the memo from Goddard uh, stated basically that we don't have any interest in that easement because it has not been improved. Even though it's been dedicated on the plat, it has not been accepted by the county. And so if it's not improved, not maintained, and not ma accepted by the county, we really don't have any interest in that easement. He did state that uh, you might be able to close the, uh, uh, the dedication off, but in my opinion, the only way to do that is to actually replat the property and somehow give it to adjoining properties. And that, that would take the owner of the property, which I presume would be either the original developer or is his heirs, to, uh, to accomplish that. I'm not suggesting that that's the, the way we need to go, but that is open to closure if, if somebody that owns the property actually could do that. Uh, the memo from Norman Newton was done in, uh, back in the 90s. Uh, it was when, in a time when I think the county was kind of grappling with how they were going to um, close roads and uh, was trying to come up with a procedure. Uh, Norman Newton stated that there was a state statute that uh, would allow the county to do basically the process that we're going through right now, but I could find no information or no evidence that uh, that uh, statute was adopted by the county commission. Within the statute, it says to come under that uh, type of procedure, the county commission would have to vote by a two-thirds majority to adopt that uh, procedure, and I could find no evidence that that occurred. I've conferred with the highway department. They cannot recall that happening either. So we're basically left with uh, a, a, a private act that states that the uh, county highway superintendent has the authority on this, and it does not, sh does not show any role for the planning commission. So based on the fact that, uh, or the, the finding of the first memo, that we don't have an interest in the easement, based on the second memo, the older memo, that uh, we really don't have any role to play uh, in this process, I would suggest that the Planning Commission forward this back or, or send this back to the County Commission with the findings that are in the memo that I've provided you. Does everybody understand what, what John has said and have you read the uh, documentation? Commissioner McClellan. Motion to send it back to the County Commission. All right, we have a motion to send it back to the County Commission saying it is outside of our purview as we understand it, along with the documentation and research that John has done. Do I have a second? Yes, we have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. John, I assume you'll take care of it. Yes. And assisting the county commission in any further action on their part. Uh, long range planning. Okay. The uh, ridge top and hillside regulations were referred back to the uh, uh, planning commission by the uh, the county commission. And if you uh, read your emails. As of last evening, you received a, uh, uh, some documentation from John on that. It would be, at this point, inappropriate, I believe, for us to uh, even discuss the, the documents. So 
uh, with John's uh, concurrence, I'm going to recommend this item be referred back to the ad hoc committee. Gordon is familiar with what the commission's concerns were. John has uh, conferred with uh, the lawyer on this, and between John and the ad hoc committee, I believe we can come up with something to send it back to the to the county commission. John, do you want to add to those comments? No. So, my recommendation on the uh, referral back is that we have the Ridgetop, the ad hoc, Gordon, pick up the ball with uh, John and reword or add any documentation to the Ridgetop regulations before we uh, send it back. So it will come back to us before we recommend it to the county commission. Is that okay with you, Gordon? All right. Can I have a motion from the floor to do that? And a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. If I, if I could, I think, Gordon, are you the chairman? You were the chairman of that. If you and I could sit down and maybe come up with some wording to present to that uh, committee, I think it would make it go a little bit smoother. Right. So we, if we could just sit down. If the, if the other ad hoc committee members want to be there, well, that would be fine too. But, uh, well, this is just to get some proposed wording oh, okay. so we won't have to start from scratch. Is that okay, members? They can wordsmith it and bring it to the ad hoc, and then the ad hoc can bring it back, right. back, back to us. Commissioner Kirby. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, by reading what we received, uh, if we, if the wording is right, we don't have to have another public hearing. <coughs> the way I understood. If we limit the changes right. to what was uh, noted in the memo, then I think the idea was that you would not have to have another okay. public okay. hearing. It would be minor changes that, that to would clarify. Be, be, that would be the best solution we could come out with. I'll leave that to the committee. Okay. <clears throat> John, discussion. Oh, no. This is Roger. Discussion of digital signs. At, at last month's meeting, uh, we briefly discussed electronic message centers uh, and whether or not we should explore changes in our zoning regulations to accommodate them. Um, the body did give me the direction to bring at, uh, back information for further discussion on the topic. And below, <clears throat> I gave you our current sign regulations, which I'd like to point out, section I-4, basically, makes it to where you can't use these in, in uh, anywhere in the county at this time. And I also gave you uh, some changes that the city of Maryville, they were very similar to ours. Um, I gave you the changes they made that allowed them to co accommodate. Evidently, this, this is the way everybody's going with advertising on, on premise. And the, the city of Maryville's uh, amendments uh, accomplished six points, and the, the first is that they defined what an electronic message center is. The, the second is they, they uh, makes them permissible by setting standards, and the standards are the remaining points and include where they are to be permitted, limit the number permitted per lot or parcel, establish the length of time a message must be displayed, and I'll come back to that in just a second and establishes a distance that an electronic message center has to be from a residence. The, the length of time a message must be displayed is to keep <coughs> it from just continually flashing. So they've got, it has to be displayed for at least 60 seconds before it's changed. And it can't roll into it, it has to change entirely at once. And it also goes in to talk about how it, it can't be like video or any animation or anything like that that's constantly moving. It's, you know, like it, it would flash, up, flash its message, hold it for at least 60 seconds, then flash up the next one in its entirety. Floor is open for any questions, comments, discussion. Uh, I guess, Roger, one of the first questions I would have, uh, Commissioner Carrigo, go ahead. Uh, if we were to move to approve this, whose responsibility would it be to enforce it? 
police it? it, it would, there are signs have to are required to get a permit, so they'd come through my office. Okay. Um, if we're if we're talking about. If I'm not mistaken, you mentioned the length of time that they can be in place. Is, is that something that someone's going to have to be actually in the field policing to make sure they're in compliance with that? Or once it's there, it's there, and we don't have to worry about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have to observe it. It could come in as a complaint or... I, I guess where I'm going with it is, is it going to overtax somebody to have to be monitoring, you know, going around looking at these things and... Uh, if that's your job, um, <laughs> is that something you want to do? <clears throat> well, it, it would be. Um, I don't think it would be that that difficult to, to achieve. It, and by looking at the first, first of all, we've got a limited amount of commercial zoning in the county, so I would think that we would. I was just thinking that we've got two zones we could limit these to: the the commercial and then the RAC. Possibly some of the industrial ones, but usually the businesses in the industrial parks aren't trying to draw customers in. People know they're there. Right. I guess my kind of my question was headed in that direction as to where where would be appropriate and how do we would limit it. Might have to look look at a map, and uh, I mean, RAC, if I can recall, is, is basically 411 South is where the majority of the RACs have that we've acted upon, and where then we have scattering of commercial on 321, both east and west. What's the general feeling of the commission? Have you had a, any significant number of requests for, for these? You know, through the years, I have one here and there, but last month I had three come in in one week. Uh, and one of them was adamant about, he was privy of the, uh, the Maryville changes, so he, he wanted me to explore that option. It, where he was, yeah, he would he would be in the commercial zone. Yeah, I just, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to note that the the RAC zone was uh, an accommodation to the rural areas and the and the commercial uh, development along the major highways. When we developed that, we made it a lower impact zone than the C commercial zone, which is closer to the city and the city's urban growth boundary. Uh, and you might want to consider that in. Uh, possibly discriminating on where you would allow these signs to be. Uh, these can be very bright in a rural area. They can blend in in an urban area a lot more easily than in a rural area. Thank you, John. Commissioner Merrill? <laughs> kind of along the same thing that, that you're saying is most of the signs that I've seen have been pretty high up, but if they were to lower them, they could be a very big distraction because they're very bright and so I didn't, I didn't see any height limitations. I know usually it's just the opposite. You want to keep things down low, but with these, they're big and they're very bright. Well, um, our sign limitations limits any signs to 20 feet tall. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look in Maryville's, what they, what they adopted, these have to be a part of, not the entire sign, but a part of the on-sign premise sign. So you wouldn't just have this electronic message board. It would be like a, a reader board on the bottom of the sign for X store. Uh, and, and it has to be a part of that store sign versus just it, it being there by itself. We could always limit the size of them too. I mean, that's, that's just not in there. I'd like to point out just as a, an addendum to that, these signs can be regulated as to intensity uh, and uh, you might want to explore possible regulation of intensity in daylight and nighttime situations. I think they mentioned something about that in 
if they're not marital. You can, you can actually set a standard for nighttime uh, intensity. Daytime, it doesn't make that much difference. Commissioner Roddy? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, are you talking about just an electronic sign that would support one business or a, like a billboard that would have four different messages? No, uh, billboards are not permissible in the county. Ah. Yeah, for off-premise off advertisements, not permissible. Um, it would be just for a, a, a store location. Business. Yeah, okay. thank you. Commissioner Wright. Uh, one in particular, Roger, I believe we granted a variance on was the CBBC building out just right at the Maryville uh, line on 321. If y'all want to take a look at that one, they done a good job on it. And uh, that was done through the uh, BZA, if I remember. Is that correct? <clears throat> yeah, I think they had a little different technology. They were using, uh, they called that halo. <laughs> I don't know. It's or, or, or how, how their letters were lit was they were backlit, but not backlit in the same manner as the entire sign. It, it looks it, good. It's just kind point. of a halo effect around the letters. It looks good, I think. What is the pleasure of the body? Is this something we want Roger to further uh, uh, develop into a potential modification to the zoning regs? And I guess then the question would also be, do we want to perhaps just start out initially allowing it in the uh, commercial zone as opposed to both RAC and the commercial? Because I agree with John's comments. I mean, commercial is in closer to the to the city and uh, would be less distracting to the to the rural outlying areas. I'm not sure I want to see, would like to see these all pop up out in the in the rural areas. I think this is something we might ought to look into. I would, uh, yeah, I would recommend that we uh, take a look at it and uh, see what we. All right. Do we want to limit it to the commercial zones at this point? <clears throat> no, I would uh, rather uh, I would rather do well. We could do it either way, and then come back and pick up uh, pick up the other. But, the RAC. Uh, yeah, the RAC. Or we could do it together. Right there. What's the general feeling of the body? Yes. What? <laughs> Move forward. And only the commercial zone. Yeah. Only the commercial. All right, Roger. Uh, the In the city ordinance, it doesn't, in looking at it, I don't see where they define the maximum size. They, Is it defined el elsewhere? <coughs> in their they don't define the maximum size of the message center itself, but it, um, Throughout the rest of the ordinance, they, they regulate the size of the signs, and, and they've just left it on there that this has to be part, part of, of the sign. So that I guess ultimately that would limit it. What is the, what is without me having to go back and read the sign regulations? What are our maximum sign sizes? Our maximum is uh, 100 square feet. So 10 by 10. Right. Wait, I may be wrong. Or that. thereabouts. Yes, it's 100 square feet. So, it, which is a pretty big sign. That that is 10 by 10 is pretty good size. So it would have to fit within within that size. But we are also limiting it not to videos or to moving pictures. Yeah, I, 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 what I think I'm thinking of is what I. I like I that part of the or, uh, ordinance that that you know it's just text on or. Print on, or, or maybe just limited to a still shot, okay. and not not something that's animated. Right. And I enjoy the Maryville College one. <laughs> At least it tells me what's going on. <laughs> All right. 
John will, I mean, uh, Roger will put it back in your lap to uh, come up with the verbiage that would go into the actual zoning regulations and uh, initially would apply to the commercial zone. Sounds we good. We can always go back and add it <clears throat> to RAC. I will have you something next month to look at. All right. John, anything else for? Yeah, just on under staff reports, if I'd like to, to point out that we do have a, uh, uh, I'm trying to put together a training module that will get you out of a classroom situation, actually get you out to, to see things in the county. I call it systematically blunt. Uh, the uh, planning commissions voted uh, mainly for transportation, traffic types of things, but I have an opportunity to actually uh, uh, have a uh, training that's involving the solid waste authority operation and also litter. So I think we can put Keep Blunt Beautiful and Solid Waste Authority together. Uh, Mr. Kirby's on the board with me on that, and uh, we discussed that at the last board meeting. The board is very interested in pursuing that, so I'd like to put that together. It's about an hour to an hour and a half uh, field type of uh, training. Uh, so I'll be offering that to you before the, after the hot weather, before the real cold weather. Okay, because I'm not going to get out in 90 degree weather going around a, a trash heap. <laughs> uh, beyond that, I do have some uh, uh, training modules. Uh, given that we've had some memos that are very legally oriented, I do have a, a training module, it's about an hour and a half, of how, you, how to keep yourself out of trouble legally. And uh, I would like to set up a time to present that. It'll kind of add to what was in the, the memo that was supplied to you, and I'll be setting that up. That, that'll account for about three hours. Uh, some of the members have not gotten any hours yet, and I would like for you to take opportunity on that. Uh, Marlene, did you set out those other yeah. notices? There's a notice about one that's occurring next, uh, was it next Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, so if you can go to that, you can pick up another two hours. Uh, that, that means you have to travel to Knoxville to get that. We will get you your four hours, even if I have to start offering it individually to people near the end of the year, which I kind of do every year. Uh, but uh, I, I need to reinforce it. It's your responsibility to get those four hours under state statutes. I'm just providing an opportunity to you. It's like providing the water, but I can't bring the horse to the water and make it drink. Okay, so I, I wish, the, I hope that you will take the initiative to actually uh, avail yourselves of these opportunities. Thank you. Maybe I shouldn't have used that analogy with this. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>